news comes first. This is ABC7 Extra. Good evening, I'm Selwyn Sines, and welcome to ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition, and thank you for permitting us into your homes as we discuss an issue that affects all of us, the return of mass mandates to the borderland. Cases of COVID-19 are spreading rapidly as a fourth wave takes over the nation, much of it sparked by the Delta variant. The spread is so alarming, Texas school districts and some communities are defying Governor Greg Abbott's executive order restricting governmental and education entities from imposing a face mask mandate. Now the stage is set for local governments like El Paso and local school districts to go head to head on an issue aimed at protecting everyone from a virus that has already claimed close to 2,800 borderland lives. This is wrong on many, many levels. The health of my children lies in my hands. We are knowingly putting our children in danger. I wouldn't wish this kind of grief on anyone, students or parents. Not here, not in school. The return to mask mandates is proving to be a divisive issue. El Paso and are for and against the return to mask mandates. El Paso Health Authority Dr. Hector Ocaranza is using his power to order a mask mandate throughout the county for any indoor activities to try to stop the spread of COVID before hospitals here are overwhelmed. And because of the concerning rise in positive cases and also the vulnerability of our community to the complications of COVID-19. The health order is in direct defiance of Governor Greg Abbott's order, which reads, quote, no governmental entity, including a county, city, school district, and public health authority, and no governmental official may require any person to wear a face covering or to mandate that another person wear a face covering. Attorney General Ken Paxton went on record saying he will go after any communities and school districts who go against the governor's orders. Confident in response, in El Paso City representatives voted to back Dr. Carranza and wage a legal war against the state. The city council has approved um, authority for the city attorney's office to file suit against the governor in order to um, argue about whether he has authority to prohibit Dr. Carranza and similar local authority or other health measures at the local level. His office also filed a temporary restraining order to halt the governor's order. County Court Judge Ruben Morales approved the restraining order, paving the way for the mandate to go forward. A hearing on the city's request for a permanent decision is scheduled for the end of the month. And I will be a yes as well. This motion passes. <laughs> El Paso, Socorro, Canotillo, Anthony, Tornillo are among the districts defying the governor's order and following Ocarranza's mass mandates for students in classrooms. Statewide, dozens of school districts are implementing their own mask orders. ABC7 obtained the letter Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is sending across the state warning districts his office, quote, will pursue further legal action, including any available injunctive relief, costs, and attorney's fees, penalties, and sanctions, including contempt of court against any local jurisdiction that insists on enforcing local mass mandates. The local mass mandate for El Paso County went into effect Wednesday. In schools, that order went into effect Thursday. However, not all businesses are in line with the order, claiming not enough is known about local mandates and asking if the order will be overturned by the state's highest court, as Attorney yes, General Paxson says. In response to the uncertainty, the Public Health Department of El Paso is reinstituting its COVID-19 Education Task Force. These teams will focus more on education, leaving enforcement in the hands of police, deputies, and constables. This time around, the Health Education Task Force is going out, out on themselves, on their own, and they are uh, talking to the, the managers of the establishments, for example, again, uh, bars or uh, grocery stores. And if those businesses are found not complying, law enforcement will be notified. So the fine for a person caught be violating be the mass mandate can be a misdemeanor citation of $500. As of late Thursday night, the Texas Supreme Court dismissed Governor Greg Abbott's request to ban mask mandates in school districts, meaning those mask mandates across the state can remain in place for now, including the ones in El Paso. This happened because of a technicality. The state Supreme Court dismissed the governor's request because justice has cited a provision that requires matters to go to an appeals court before it reaches the Texas Supreme Court. That's why the ruling from a lower court stays in place. Now, there are several businesses that have not imposed a new mask mandate yet as they wait for clarification, which could lead to confusion among those entering businesses. ABC7 asked El Pasoans what their understanding is of the new mandate and who they believe it applies to. From what I understand, uh, we're supposed to wear masks when we're in public. 
So if we go to Walmart or Albertsons or to the mall, you know, when we're around other people, but once we get out, we're allowed to take them off. I think it's a personal choice, you know. Uh, me, I prefer to wear it, you know, to protect uh, myself and other people. But I think it's a personal choice. It shouldn't be mandated. Everybody feels it's a personal choice, but I think we're just respecting each other and we're trying to follow the rules, you know, because I don't know what's going to happen if we don't wear them. <laughs> And what do you know about the mandate? Um, do you know the rules that they're, like, where are you supposed to wear a mask? Who's supposed to wear one? Do you understand it? Oh, well, I heard that it's supposed to be worn when you're inside a facility. And uh, I understand also that the government, uh, the governor is the one that mandated it, that. So that's, uh, that's all I know. No, I, I don't. I, I just figure, you know, when there's people around me, I'm, I'm going to wear one just out of respect and try to stay six feet apart. And um, or if I'm, I'm in public, but I figure this is the park, so I don't have to wear it. I'm just doing this for my skin. You're watching ABC 7 Extra. When we come back, we talk to El Paso Health Authority to get clarification on the mask mandate and to the director of public health department to find out what happens next to get other businesses to enforce the mandate. You're watching ABC 7 Extra, where news comes first. You've got enough to think about maintaining. Good thing the all-new 2022 Volkswagen Taos has a lower cost of maintenance than Toyota RAV4. Come into your Volkswagen dealer today and lease the all-new 2022 Taos S for just $229 a month. Unlock a summer of possibilities in a new Chevy. Expand your options and your perspective. Find your next adventure in a new Chevy. Make no monthly payments for 120 days on all Silverado 1500 Crew Cab pickups. Plus, get 2.49% financing for 72 months and get 3750 total value on this Silverado Texas Edition. After an entire year of a pandemic, you might be struggling to pay your rent and utility bills. But there's good news. The state of New Mexico's free COVID-19 financial relief program can help. You may be eligible for the emergency rental assistance program that pays current or past due residential rent and utilities. Tens of millions of dollars has already been awarded to New Mexican residents. So go to renthelpnm.org and apply now. We are Bravo, Bravo Chevrolet, and we're here to serve you in the most amazing ways. We're about the culture, fun, and the experience. Like no down payment, no payments for 90 days, and oil changes for life. And the best news is that we do have cars. I'm a veteran, and veterans are always welcome at Bravo Chevrolet. Who are we? Bravo! You've got enough to think about maintaining. Good thing the all-new 2022 Volkswagen Taos has a lower cost of maintenance than Toyota RAV4. Come into your Volkswagen dealer today and lease the all-new 2022 Taos S for just $229 a month. Welcome back to ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. Joining us now is El Paso Health Authority, Dr. Hector Ocaranza. Also with us is Public Health Department of El Paso Director, Angela Mora. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. I'm going to start with you, Dr. Carranza. Let's talk about the mask mandate, why you issued it, and who it applies to. Well, the reason why we issue the mask mandate is to protect our community. This is not to impose restrictions, but to promote public health. We know that the mask uh, works in a way that is going to protect those that wear it and also protect others from somebody that is infectious. Many people are infectious and don't know that they have the virus. And with the Delta variant being a lot more infectious than the original virus, then it, this makes sense as an extra layer of protection that we have in our uh, public health armamentary. So it is, it is something extremely beneficial. But again, we need to remind the, the community that there's other tools such as the vaccination, which is extremely important, the distancing, the hygiene, and, and keep people home if they're sick. I'm sure you've been watching uh, news and seeing just how many people are passionate about this, those people for and those against. 
Are you concerned about this, that so many people are passionate about it? Well, we certainly have heard about the passion that is in the mass. We know that our community is passionate about how to, to take care of each other. And that passion in caring for each other as a community will bring us to a better place. And that's what we're hoping. And uh, Ms. Mora, uh, to you, you've seen obviously just the backlash that we've all been seeing from a lot of folks being a, of such a divisive issue, those who are for and those who are against. Will enforcement of the mass mandate be any different this time around as it was the first time? Um, what we are, we're planning, uh, the approach from the education task force is going to be pretty safe, pretty much the same. We are trying to just, you know, sound the alarm and inform people on what's going on out there, primarily with the additional you know, number of cases that we're receiving and the the danger of the of the Delta variant. We are, uh, we're already out there talking to businesses uh, and we are finding that businesses are very receptive. So our, we are bringing signage for them to post on their businesses so that people are aware that masks are required. And we, uh, we have been very successful in the past in just talking to management of these establishments and just asking them to work with us and to encourage this, their customers to uh, to adhere to the mandate. So the uh, the same we're using exactly the same approach. And so far, we have been uh, very uh, they've been very receptive. We're seeing very uh, positive uh, outcomes uh, from these facilities. The first time around, when the first mask mandate was issued, people were more uh, obviously willing to work with you. And now as we go into businesses, it seems as though some businesses are reluctant to impose that same mass mandate, the social distancing, everything that we had the first time around. What has changed and what explanation are you giving to these businesses so they can comply? You know, actually what we have found is that we, our community is much more educated than at the beginning of, uh, of, of last year. And they are actually more receptive to the messages. It's, it's taking us lo less long, um, it's taking us less time for us to be able to bring our point across and to uh, receive agreement. So we have not, of all the businesses that we have visited so far, we have not encountered any negative, uh, any negative responses from management. Uh, I don't know, you said you, you've heard that, but we, we haven't yet. So actually this time around, I think we have a much more educated community and they are much more receptive to understanding why we are imposing this mandate on the community. Sadly, this time around, as we just showed a short while ago, the, the passion is just really, really running high and some people are taking uh, extreme measures into their own hands. Um, and this time around, you're, ha you're having the education task force going out by themselves without law enforcement. Will that change taking into consideration what's happening now? No, it's, it is not, it's not changing. Uh, the, the education task force and all of the employees that deal with the public in general, they are trained to know how to respond uh, to situations that might put them in danger. So they are trained to, to back down, not to be argumentative with anybody who has a, a different opinion or who uh, you know, just wants to argue with the educators, uh, they know how to protect themselves. And in addition to that, we coordinate with 911 dispatch. So the, in the event that they feel uh, threatened by anyone, by any situation, they will contact 911 and 911 will immediately dispatch one of the patrols that is in the area closest to the facilities where they are at. But unfortunately, we have not encountered any of those situations throughout the pandemic. Uh, I think, again, this time around, I, people are much more educated and, and much more receptive uh, to the messages and to the mandate. Although you saw the, you see the ones with uh, a lot of passion, uh, I think uh, there's uh, some of them, but fortunately, I think that the majority of our people, they do understand that this is very important uh, for us to impose and for us to follow because it is going to help us save lives. Uh, we lost, uh, you know, over 20, 2,700 members of our community to, to the pandemic. We want to avoid do whatever is necessary uh, and it's in our power for us to prevent one more death. So this is, this is the intention and we really call on the community to listen, to uh, practice protective measures because 
they will uh, really help us save lives. It could be your life, my life, it could be the life of our loved ones. Dr. O, what, Dr. Carranza, what is your best argument to those who have, say, are, are listening to studies that say that uh, masks are not effective? What is your best argument for them? Well, definitely there's mounting scientific evidence about the effectiveness of the mask. Before the pandemic, we didn't have that much uh, scientific evidence because the need to have a mask had not arise uh, at that point yet. But with our fight against the pandemic, a lot of scientists have gone to the studies to prove the effectiveness, to prove that it's safe to be wearing the mask, and to prove that diseases uh, can be prevented, especially those respiratory diseases. And we saw it very vividly here in our community in how in 2020, the flu season, we had a decrease of 96% of the cases. That is extremely staggering very solid evidence that by just doing simple steps, which is was wearing the mask, by washing your hands and staying home, simple influenza season that we would see thousands of cases, it was considerably reduced. Okay, Dr. Carranza, Ms. Mora, we're gonna take a really quick break. You're watching ABC7 Extra, still ahead. Emotions are running high with parents concerning mask mandates for their children. What is the city hearing from the public? I'll ask my guests when we come back. We'll also talk about those uh, third vaccines or for or the, uh, the one for the uh, booster for the immunocompromised. We'll ask our guests about that as well. We'll be back. Plenty of sunshine through today with the season. Rush Hour will never feel the same. Experience thrilling performance from our entire line of vehicles at the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales Event. Get special offers on the 2021 IS300. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Think premium can't be capable? Think again. Introducing the first ever AT4 lineup. Premium and capable. That's professional grade from GMC. Or get over 3,500 purchase cash on this 2021 Sierra Light Duty Crew Cab Texas Edition. Plus current eligible GMC owners get an additional 250 purchase allowance. See your El Paso Las Cruces GMC dealers. Trade-in value is heating up right now. Come see us and trade up at Casa Buick GMC. It's the summer of big value, and your old ride is your ticket to a hot new Buick or GMC. Get $2,500 off MSRP on a GMC Sierra 1500. Trade-in value is scorching hot, but it will cool down. Bring us your car and get paid today. Get more for your trade-in at Casa Buick GMC. Home of the nice guys. Yeah! With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. Welcome back to ABC7 Extra. Joining us once again is El Paso Health Authority, Dr. Hector Ocaranza. Also with us is Public Health Department of El Paso Director, Angela Mora. And I'll start with you, Dr. Ocaranza. Let's talk about this third vaccine or the booster shot. Is there a difference between the two? Well, the third dose of the vaccine is recommended for those that are immunosuppressed. Initially, those group of people, which is a small group of people, did not mount the necessary immune response to have the full protection. So that's why it is required to have a third dose. When we talk about the booster shot, the booster shot is for the regular population that is immunocompetent, in which with time, the protection wanes. And that's what we need to remind the immune system with a booster shot, how to protect our body. So that's the basic, very simple way to put it about the third dose and the booster shot. How can we check, say for instance, we, we know we have to wait a certain amount of time before we even consider the third, uh, the third shot, or the booster shot. Uh, first of all, how long is that time and how can we check 
to see if our antibodies, antibodies have uh, diminished? Well, definitely we don't recommend that people go to the lab to check their antibodies because it's not a direct reflection of what your immune system is doing. What the studies have shown, and they utilize very complex and sophisticated tests uh, in the people that participate in those studies to determine what's the right time that they can administer the third dose and what would be the right time to administer the booster dose. So what people need to, to see is that one, they need to speak with their healthcare provider to see if they are considered to be immunosuppressed or immunocompromised. And second, they'll wait for the instructions as how we're going to be rolling out and who's going to be receiving the booster shot and at what time, because the companies at the FDA and the CDC have looked at all the studies, have determined the proper timing between the last dose where you completed the immunization schedule and when the booster uh, dose is going to be administered. Ms. Mora, one of the things that we saw the first time around when the, the uh, vaccines first came out is that UMC and the city were not sharing a whole lot of information. I don't know if you all are sharing that information now, but how will people be notified that it is time for them to receive that third vaccine, especially if UMC had their list and the city had their list? So right now we have already, we're already set up to, for people to make their appointment to receive their third dose. Uh, we uh, were, you know, we're asking for the media help to to publicize to promote this effort. Uh, we are not planning on calling uh, the individuals uh, directly. We're just going to to do social messaging, send messages to the medical providers, uh, because most of those individuals, all those individuals who need the third dose, they are under the care of a physician. We have very close ties with the medical community. And we have uh, already informed them that we are open for the uh, for the third dose. We estimate uh, that there's uh, a little over 34,000 individuals who are considered immunocompromised. Uh, so we are we're, uh, reaching out to the medical community primarily for them to help us reach out to to those individuals. But the the uh, system is already set up. People can make their appointment, and in fact, people are calling already to make their appointment, uh, which is going to be offers uh, the third shot at selected uh, clinics throughout El Paso. I'm sure folks who received their vaccine from UMC are wondering the very same thing. Should they contact you to determine whether or not they should sign up for that for that booster shot or the third vaccine, or should they contact UMC? They can contact, they can get their vaccine any anywhere they, they want, the uh, the third dose. They can go to their a pharmacy, they can go to a medical pro, their medical provider, they can go to UMC or, or us. Uh, they, they just need to contact, if they wanna contact us, or if they wanna contact UMC, they can make the appointment at any place uh, they feel most comfortable with. And where will those uh, third vaccines or booster shots be given? Uh, we have a number of clinics uh, throughout El Paso. All they have to do is go to epstrong.org and see the list of the of the sites for the city of El Paso. I'm not absolutely sure where the uh, UMC or the other, uh, we know all the pharmacies, uh, while uh, Walgreens and CVS, they, we know where they are at. Uh, so people can call the pharmacy. In fact, uh, pharmacies are already contacting individuals who uh, subscribe to their newsletters to let them know that they are now open for the third dose. Uh, I'm sure that UMC is also uh, has already sent notifications. So they can uh, just go to the EP Strong to find out the sites for the city of El Paso or contact UMC directly so they can know where those facilities are. Now, again, the medical community, they are aware of the sites that are available for uh, from the city of El Paso. Dr. Carranza, one of the hardest places to enforce this mask mandate, any mask rule, are bars. Uh, we know that, we learned that from the first time around. Is there any talk or any consideration that if things get out of hand, bars may be shut down? We don't consider shutting down places. What we are considering and what we uh, invite the communities to come together, wear the mask, because this is a matter of protecting each other. It's not a matter of being restrictive, but it's a matter of being prevented. So with the education task force, with the announcements that we have in how to take care of each other, we'll be able to stay safe. We won't be seeing the scenery that we saw in October, November where the hospitals were full that we had to bring 
trucks and witnessing the suffering that our community had in families were shattered by this horrible virus and pandemic that's why we're counting on people understanding the sense of the prevention not the restriction but more caring for each other dr caranza Ms. angela mora thank you so much for taking time to talk to us i appreciate your time thank you thank you Saul. And finally tonight, on a personal note, I understand how passionate people are about face coverings, most especially after coming out of almost a year of having to wear one. Not everyone wants to wear one, we understand that. But the CDC and hundreds, if not thousands of medical experts say the best way to avoid getting the potentially deadly virus, COVID-19, is to get vaccinated and to wear a mask. If you follow Sunday Extra, you may have heard me say COVID taught, they taught us, or COVID-19 taught us, not just to take better care of ourselves, but to take care of others as well. Thank you for joining us. I'm Saul Sainz, and this has been ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. Good night y buenas noches.